tight ship in this here bar. And I want three things out of it. Number one, you keep your hands off the waitresses. <laughs> Number two, you start on time, you end on time. Number three, you best not suck. <laughs> Get me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You're tough on us. Get your ass on over there and set up. Get your ass on over there. Now, damn it. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, welcome to another Something in the Water podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Uncle Dave Griffin, along with Mr. Sean Clark. And our guest this time is our good buddy, Justin Minshew. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. It's good to have you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yes, good to be sir. here. Good to be here. Yeah, uh, we had a time getting, getting you because you're just a busy, busy, busy yeah. man. Busy man with a weird pandemic schedule. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, Justin is uh, the uh, uh, lead set carpenter mm -hmm. for Dirk Bentley, uh, and uh, also our buddy from Waycross. Yeah. yeah, well, he started out being our buddy from Waycross, and then big things happened. You know? Now he don't talk to us anymore. <laughs> well, he don't hardly see us anymore no, because he's so busy. No. Uh, we've been. Uh, shooting messages back and to uh, for probably a good six months now, trying to find out when a time off would be that you'd be coming back to Waycross. And I was thinking the whole time that I know, I know your mama, uh, Glenda Sutton, and uh, <clears throat> I knew she lived here. I thought that's uh, what she still lived here until you told me a little bit earlier that uh, her and your little sister and your your nephew mm -hmm. uh, have all moved up there right uh, within a few miles of, yeah, of just where you live, which yeah. is uh, Hermitage. Hermitage, right outside of Nashville. Yeah, and then they, they live in uh, Mountain Juliet, and that's just about 15 minutes down the road from me. That's ideal. So yeah. I thought that you would be coming back to Waycross to see them, and then uh, yeah, no, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's it. That's why it's hard to get down here nowadays. Yeah, uh, Brandon's in Yulee, and Reed's living in Memphis now, and my mm -hmm. mom's near me, and don't have as many. Reed, uh, he lives in Memphis now. Daniel, Reed Daniel, yeah. Reed Daniel. I didn't know he moved to Memphis. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Not too long ago. I can't keep months. up with all all the young folks. Yeah, <laughs> I mean y'all were. Oh, it goes back. <clears throat> Let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk talk about uh, the history around that. Let's go way back on the time machine. Um, the first I ever heard of you, my daughter was born. Where's that little red wagon, Justin? Uh, my, uh, my daughter, Megan was born on March 12th, 1983. When was your birthday? May 4th. May 4th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there y'all oh, yeah. are. There we are. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. At her first birthday party. That would have been March 12th, 1984. <laughs> oh, but uh, well, no, wait. I wonder if that's my first birthday party. That was probably your first birthday party yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. I think it was because I think that was my. I got that. Uh, the radio flyer. Yeah, I think that was. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I didn't Look know y'all. I knew that y'all went back, but I thought like high school or junior high. Or no, there, there's no, pictures of, of us uh, that age. You know, taking a bath together. You know, like in in the bathtub. Damn you! you. How you feel about it, Dave? <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> That's my daughter. <laughs> All right. Uh, now there's another uh, photo. I think it's in that numbered 
section, uh, or it might be, it's probably called Megan Justin uh, 2. It's a childhood photograph, not that one. Uh, there you go. This would have been y'all at a at, oh, a, wow. at another stage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks mm -hmm. to be about six uh -huh. action shot, five, six, or seven. Another birthday, probably. Good gracious, I remember my daughter at that age. She had that per curly perm, and she looks like she's catching something or throwing something. Oh, it might be a bubble or something that she's. Well, well Justin was a baller. He was. Yeah, but I'll slam that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that looks like two points right mm -hmm. there. Converse on. <laughs> yeah. Is that your house? Yeah, that's uh, my grandma's house. That's your grandma's? Yeah. How about that? Uh, and now uh, do the one from just Megan and Megan Justin. This was at, at Reed at uh, um, not uh, Reed, Brandon's wedding. Yeah, Brandon's wedding. <clears throat> Yep, there we, there we go. That was that was on uh, Jekyll Island at the Jekyll Hotel. Everybody, I was I uh, conducted the ceremony. I married that's right, yeah. Brandon and Audrey, and screwed up because I I looked up from my script and I called what you call the bride uh, Audrey? I call her Ashley. Ashley. <laughs> oh my God! Took yep. my eyes off my script <laughs> just for a second and screwed up. You and, recovered well, though. Yeah. Oh, they they uh, Audrey was the one. She kind of I could feel uh, a <laughs> moment, you know, in the crowd, and I, I kind of stopped, paused for a minute, and looked at Audrey, and she was looking at me like. <laughs> And I thought, what did I do? What did I do? What did I just, oh, no, God. And then it hit me, you know. And and, and Audrey says, well, if Ashley's here, she's too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I got him. And uh, and it broke the ice, you know, and every, everything kind of, everybody giggled and moved on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so history long, long between history. us goes yeah. Way back to my daughter and and you as uh, uh, babies uh, yeah. born the same year. Now there's a, another picture there of uh, Folkadelic. I think it's in. Oh yeah, I, I was think trying, it's I was in my. To find I think it's pictures. in my uh, first email. That one, yeah. That was y'all's first oh, band yeah. together. This is the duo that you and my daughter oh, wow. Megan put together, and I couldn't tell you what year that was. I don't have a year on this poster here. And that's in your backyard, Dave. Right? No, it's not. No? That's a brick house. Oh. Do you remember where that was? Mm -mm. Y'all were on the patio at a brick house. Got a different name there. Justin Sutton. Justin Sutton, that's yeah. right. So how did that happen? Now, wait a minute. I know this much. I was in the marching band in high school. Your daddy, Albert Albert Sutton, was probably a senior when I first entered the band, and he was a trombone player in the marching mm -hmm. band. And I, well, he married Glenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and that was about it. And that's why that my, was your I, daddy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's kind of why I changed my name. He he, he wasn't around too. Yeah, yeah. You know, too often, I felt like I was raised on the Minchie side of family, and and now who was? Uh, oh, uh, your mama's maiden name was Minchie. That's Minchie, right. yeah. Glenda, and she had a sister named Gail, mm -hmm. and yep. my uncle Gary, Gary Minchie. Well, it's funny uh, because Glenda and Gail were good friends with Megan's mother, my first wife. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I remember went to school uh, with them. Uh, they all went to school together, right? Uh, well, I think uh, your mama and Gail were Ware County girls. I'm pretty sure they were. But I remember uh, uh, the three of them were at a, a, a cottage at Fernandina one summer, and I rode the bus down there to meet up with with uh, Megan's mama and uh, share the uh, cottage with your, your mama and Gail, Aunt Gail, oh, yeah? for the weekend. That's when we were dating. Uh, 
<clears throat> there's a picture of us. I want to say it's at the Ritz Theater when the Grand Parsons did a thing. Th- what there. band were you in? Us and Eddie? No, no, uh, that, that wasn't you. Yeah, that's right. But, oh, Folkadelic. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah me and right. Megan, and we we played the Ritz Theater. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it there one yep. time? You played Ripple. Yep, that's right. That's yeah. right. I've got dang. I could have sent the uh, a, a little sound audio thing of y'all's performance oh, of that. I did. You, I'm glad you did. I, was probably, probably, I, probably have, wasn't that I have that. Uh, on. Weren't y'all in another band? You and Megan, uh, jukebox, or was that uh, was that Brandon? Jukebox, you, uh, something, something six string, six string. That sounds familiar. Sammy six string. No, uh, that was another something that I think Brandon was in. Jukebox Cowboys or uh, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, wow, uh, <laughs> that sounds familiar. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess the point of it is that you uh, were involved in the music scene in Waycross from a, a an early age, and um, how did you get uh, into music? What was your the reason there? I don't. Well, there's pictures of me when I was uh, little, probably two or three years old. My mom bought me this little plastic guitar and mm-hmm. pictures of me with that. And she said at one point I I told her it just didn't sound right. It, you had plastic strings. It was a little mm-hmm. toy guitar, and <laughs> and that was it. And I think people in my family, my dad played, and my oh yeah, uh, grandma's uh, Albert mm-hmm. played guitar, yeah, uh, played bass. That oh man, I I gotta remember that. Yeah. and he played bass in church yeah. a lot. And, yeah, um, and then my grandma's brothers played guitar and stuff. I think mm-hmm. that's where it probably came from. But that was it, and then started really getting into music, you know, about 13, 14, mm-hmm. and Brandon Jones was doing that, and Reed Daniel and all of us, and, and yeah, just kicked it that off was there. It. Yeah. yeah. Did you play uh, anything, uh, what, what did you start with? Because I know you played bass in bands. Yeah. Started uh, out playing guitar, um, yeah. but then there's always a guitar player, you know, yeah. so okay. played bass. uh and you two played bass in the same band, but y'all swapped, didn't y'all swap out or something? Hey, with Chris? I think I followed you. Uh, with one of Chris's bands? You I'm... were in Hay Shaker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was also named Honky, Honky. that preceded Hay but Shaker. Didn't you play bass with them too? I did, but... Uh, what were they called then? I can't remember. I think it was Hay Shaker. When I first played with them, it was uh, me on bass, uh, Leo Neal. <clears throat> T.W. Lot mm-hmm. and Chris and Laurie. I think Roddy. you were before me then. I think, so so I think Leo Neal was one of the early drummers, and then Frank Sachs uh, played drums. That's right. That's right. And Frank was in this video that we're fixing to show you. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the. I mean, for, well, hold on. Well, there, there was there's a couple bands before that, but uh, one I was gonna. Try to remember this. Uh, one of my first bands I was in was with, uh, with uh, John Strickland. Y'all know John yeah. Strickland, and now he's playing with um, Low Water. Low Water. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. And, and doing a great job and opening yeah. up for. Uh, Is he, aren't they out of Atlanta, right? Athens. I Athens. Think. Athens. Yeah. And so that was with him, and I'm glad to see he's still kicking it and yeah, doing it. Yeah. And, and uh, so it was me and John and a handful of other what guys. Was, what was the name of y'all's band? I can't remember. I was okay. trying to remember, it and I can't remember. It. Um, oh, we got a video. So this is a video of uh, just the Chris and Laurie Ryder, who was our guest on an earlier episode, and, and uh, T W Lot, T W Lot, mm-hmm. who was a guest on one of yeah. our episodes and, uh, on guitar, Frank Frank Pink. Sykes, who's been on uh, <laughs> uh, one of the deep yeah. ends, and uh, he was the drummer, and Justin was the bass player in this, and yeah. I'm the bartender. <laughs> so this is going to be a good one, folks. This is Hay Shaker? Yeah. Yeah. That's an old club out U.S. Here's the place. Up here. Oh, my Thank God. God. Yes, I got so bad. Chris. What, Frank? The Who. Dude, what's up? Zeppelin. The W.H. Hizzle. Hey, 
I really need you back and I'm with band. Right around the corner here. Take the door to your left. Alright, thank thing. you. John Bonham. You boys in the band? Get your asses over here right now. <laughs> <laughs> like a Josie Wales move. Y'all in the band. What the hell you call yourself? Uh, we're called Hay Shaker. You ever heard of that it? damn mustache, Jeff? I you know. Yeah. I ain't never heard of it. Like Don't wider. Up. Suck now, I'm telling you that much. I run a tight ship in this here bar. And I want three things out of it. Number one, you keep your hands off the waitresses. <laughs> Number two, you start on time. You end on time. Number three, you best not suck. <laughs> Get me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You're tough on us. Get your ass on over there and set up. Get your ass on over there. Now, damn it. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I took that out of the list. <laughs> Keith Moon, way better. John Bonham's the greatest drummer that's ever existed. Dude, I was on YouTube. What's that one? Keith Moon <laughs> played a drum set with goldfish in it. Led Zeppelin. Uh, Shut up, Led Zeppelin. The Who just had a new album, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, that's right. Led Zeppelin's dead. <laughs> Did y'all tell some people to come? Hey, y'all coming tonight? <laughs> 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 Boys better not suck! <laughs> <laughs>
Who was that? That was uh, Rex. Uh, Rex Alvarez. That <laughs> uh, like. <laughs> MySpace. That My honky face. honky band. <laughs> oh boy. Hey Shaker at Honky Band on MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> That's how, how how old that is. Uh-huh. And next is uh a redhead and a brunette. That's that's Tyler Childers and his wife. <laughs> that was the next YouTube and, video. Uh, what what do you have in common with them? Then? Oh no, I think that. Was, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, so so it's Hey Shaker. Yeah. Or Honky and then Hey Shaker. And then I follow you on bass. I think I was the next bass in Hey Shaker. Yeah. For about a year, maybe a year and a half, and then uh, Matt uh, Starlin. That's right, yeah. Came in, and he's pretty much there. Uh, we, we went and, uh, with Haysecker, we went and recorded in Nashville one time yeah. and went up there, and uh, Lloyd Green played pedal steel for us, right. wow. who played uh, on Sweethearts of Rodeo. Mm -hmm. Told us some Graham Parsons. I'm glad you like it. I'll be back the, who was the producer on that? Uh, it seems like it was uh, somebody. I can't remember was his it, name. Wasn't it the guy who did the... Uh, Loretta Lynn, Jack White. Oh, that's right. That um, that's right. Um, uh, need some help, Dave. I'm thinking so. I can't. I can't get the thing. <laughs> you do this for a living. Yeah. <laughs> check. Check. Nothing. Okay. We need to take a break. Let's take a, a quick break. Fix a technical difficulty, folks. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. He's talking into the mic. It don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Gremlins be gone. <laughs> we'll be back. back. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's pick it up now. Uh, after after you left Hayshaker, I replaced you for maybe about a year, I guess. And uh, uh, what did you do then? At that point, you I moved to Atlanta. Moved to Atlanta. Not shortly after that. And uh, what was that move about? Just Relocating to a bigger city. Yeah. Or yeah. My did buddy. you have any uh, leads? I mean, yeah. Or were I, you just blind going up there? No. Uh, um, I was working at the uh, environmental lab in Blackshear, uh, Automaha oh. Laboratories. Oh. Me and Reed Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's what I was doing for work. And then the the lab director there knew a guy who ran a lab in Atlanta. And then Reed was going to school there and hooked me up with a job. And had a job waiting on me when I got there, and cool, yeah, moved up there and spent ten years there. Ten years, yeah, I lived there for uh, ten years well, until uh, I moved to Nashville. Time that, frame that up, uh, from when to when? Uh, like 
2000, uh, three or four, three or four. In, until 2014. Okay. And I moved to Nashville in 2014. So Because? I uh, started working with Dirks Bentley. Oh. Yeah. Well, how does that happen? I mean. Um, an uh, old friend of mine from Atlanta, uh, a yeah. guy I used to play in bands with, uh, 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 his brother I used to play in bands with, uh, Chris Thacker and his brother, Chris Unk. We all, um, well, we were in Amer American Anodyne together. And um, so that was before this American Anodyne. That was while I was in Atlanta. While you were in Atlanta. Yeah. Tell us about that band, because I remember y'all played uh, Swamp Town Get Down in 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pull out, uh, see if you got a picture on that, Justin, while we're talking about it. So you picked up, you did get back into music while you were in Atlanta working with the water job. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that was at the tail end of it. Uh, uh, American Anodyne was at near about the last two or three years of living in Atlanta. Were they an Atlanta band? Uh, North Georgia, a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, the lead singer lived in Dahlonega. And um, they, they were already working on stuff. And then they called me up to play bass. They were already recording, called me up to play bass. And mm -hmm. we did that for a few years. Where your photos, Dave? Yeah. That's it, American Anodyne. Um, so this is from 2012 at Swamp Town Get Down yeah, a couple Music years and before. Arts Festival. That's you on bass. Mm -hmm. Josh Sharp there playing pedal steel. That's right. Josh Sharp is another way across boy. Yeah. And who's the other guys? Uh Eric Jones, uh lead singer and, and song wrote most of the songs for it. He's the guy, tall guy. Yep, tall guy out there out front. Um Eric Jones. And then my good buddy uh Chris Thacker. He's our tour manager now with Dirks. Oh he's okay. the tour manager for Dirks. That's the other guitar player? Other guitar player yeah. right there. Um and then um Kevin Rainwater playing drums for us. Uh yeah. yeah, did that for a few years, put out a record. Where was, uh, now, you also played with a band at the Graham Parsons Guitar Pool one year called mm -hmm. Ocha La Rocha. Yep. Would that, that have been before this? Yep, yeah, that was before this. I was with them for about five years. Throughout where, the where were they out of? Atlanta, when okay. I lived in Atlanta. About two months of moving to Atlanta, about two months after I moved to Atlanta, I went to uh, this uh, uh, star bar across the street yep. from the Vortex there. Mm -hmm. And I saw this band play and they finished their set and the guy walked off the stage and I walked up to him, shook his hand and told him if he ever needed a guitar player, let me know. Yeah. And a couple weeks later, I started playing with him. And <laughs> You have the look. I can't, can't argue with yeah. that. You do have a, you do have a kind of a look uh, as, as, uh, as you'll see in all of these pictures, just throw some of these pictures up there, any of those one through 14 or whatever it is, just reflect on uh, just. Uh, I know when we saw, the first time I saw Ocha La Rocha, uh, you guys look so badass up there, but y'all look like, uh, like vampire, uh, Jesus troubadours. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, comments. Uh, that's in uh, uh, Colorado. That's in the Rocky Mountains. We had a day off with Dirks. And by God, I was going to be a cowboy that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what I'm saying. You, you're a chameleon. You fit uh, everything you go to is like, uh, all right. Yeah. That's so we, we had a day off. And <laughs> it we, all uh, works. Uh, um, there was, you could do horseback riding in the in the Rocky Mountains, and we, we went for it. Damn. So. Uh huh. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's in um, Cleveland. I think it's in Cleveland. We're Is that back a Lynx. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and we're backstage uh, in I think it's Cleveland, and the zoo there. We'll do this every once in a while when people come through and the brought animals, and and the zoo director was there, and wow. and uh, they brought a. Uh, penguin and and kangaroos and and just when the band comes, it's like, hey, here's some animals. Yeah, what? do the That's next great. two. Yeah, next. Oh two. yeah, yeah. There you go, <laughs> Joey. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I I I don't know. I guess that's just something they do for 
for you know acts coming through whatever the amphitheater is there you know uh-huh. i can't remember what what which one there's yeah, the thing uh-huh. <laughs> happy feet Th- those are those weird things where you get up and you you know you're working on the show you put on the show and you don't even know you know these these things are it's like a johnny carson day. episode yeah there we oh, go. there we go. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's my Kix Brooks look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was this that was your that, outfit for that night? Uh huh. That was so. That same tell thing. me about that now. How? Uh, what was that uh, story behind that? Story behind that. That well, well, Dirks and the guys have this uh, side project that they do called a uh, Hot Country Nights. Hot Country Nights. Hot Country Nights, and it's their '90s country cover band. It's like, like a, a parody parody it's, it's like a band that never made it you know and they kind of got stuck in time and they're they're still doing it um so so they do that and they dress up and they do their hot country night stuff and and they everyone, pulled you into it and every once in a while they, they'll encourage us to uh uh dress up and i did <laughs> and i just put that together i mean i i found that shirt and uh <laughs> had a pair of cowboy boots and had a hat and I figured I'm just going to cut myself a mustache. That's 90s country, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when I put it all together and looked at myself in the mirror, I was like, hold <laughs> on now. I look like <laughs> Kix Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they had, done. Uh-huh. they had to get me up there. <clears throat> I think I sent him a picture of that, too, of, of us being up there. But they, yeah. they. Uh, um, is that the tour bus or one of them? That's one of them. Yeah. How many tour buses y'all carry on your entourage? Um, five, oh, four, four or five. Yeah. And I don't I, think that the picture will be in that email. It'll be in his. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Okay. Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Yep, we did that one time and sold it out. That's cool. That stage behind me I built that day. That's part of what, as the lead set carpenter, that's part of what yeah. I do. So y'all build a set, every, or build a stage every time, mm-hmm. or is this not like something you take down and put back together? It's like you show up and you build a stage. Well, the state, the stage is there, but the um, our set we build. Your set, yeah. The the set pieces, the, the stuff he runs around on, and all that. Uh, my set, the set that I work on, yeah, fills up most of a semi truck. The whole. Okay. When it's all you know packaged up together in cars, so it is something you put together and take apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's it. There's uh, <laughs> something '90s country nights. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the first years. That's we, funny. Uh, that's a Dirk Bentley in the uh, black and white shirt. Yeah, the, the the leopard thing. And is he supposed to be Brooks? No, no, he's just his just own 90s, his uh, own guy. He's his he, own guy. Yeah, his his um, uh, persona there is uh, uh, Dirk. Uh, uh, no, uh, Doug Douglason is his stage persona there in that in that act. What were y'all playing? Some some uh, an old nineties uh, country song, uh, Brooks and Dunn song. A Brooks and yeah. Dunn song, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not actually playing. I'm not plugged in. I'm not doing anything. I just got up there and just you know <laughs> looked like kicks. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Moved around a little bit, and that was about it. <laughs> That's, how did that make you feel? Is that a pretty good experience? I yeah, mean, like yeah. You're in front of how many thousands? I don't know. 30, 40. No, no. Right? That's at his festival that we do in uh, Colorado. Yeah. It was probably, I don't know. I don't know. 7,000 or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there's a funny story about that, though. Um, so that's the first year we did it. Uh, the second year we did it. Uh, so so every Friday night, they would do a 90s country night. They'll bring back, uh, like we had a, a Clint uh, Black one year, and we had. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think back. Uh, Tracy Lawrence and and and, and whoever else, you know those mm-hmm. '90s mm-hmm. country yeah. guys. And um, so the second year we did it, uh, Travis Tripp was the headliner, and same deal, dressed up like that. They got me out on stage, and I just do my thing, you know, walk around, <clears throat> come back off stage. Travis Tripp standing there laughing his ass off <laughs> and high fives me as I'm coming off stage and I'm sitting here dressed as Kicks Brooks having high five and Travis Tritt. 
<laughs> how did I wind up doing that? Did y'all say, how two Georgia boys get mixed up in this? I know. He, he got a kick out of us. He thought it was a trip. Where is uh, Dirks from? Colorado? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. <laughs> We're just going to throw some photos up and get you comment on them. That's in, uh, that was a few years ago. Um, I don't know what year, um, but that's in our rehearsal. That's yeah. what it looks like when we're rehearsing before we go out on the tour. We, that's there's, the big time right there. there there's uh, big warehouses in Nashville and rehearsal spots, and we'll, we'll get a rehearsal spot, and we'll set up just like we're going to do a real show, and we'll do mm -hmm. like two weeks of rehearsals. We'll, we'll prep oh, that's everything. In one of the rehearsal yeah. spots. We'll prep everything, get everything going, and the band will come in and do about a week of. Well, let me ask you, when, you, uh, when you're out on tour and, and you put together the set, are you done or do you, I mean, you come back for the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you have to be there for the show yeah, in we case work something the show. Uh -huh. goes wrong with the set, I mm -hmm. guess. But Well, and there's things to work during the show. Uh, on our, our current tour, what we're doing now, um, our set that we do, the drum riser lifts up and I got to control that and, mm -hmm. and move it. There's, there's cues and things we do for that. And uh, the staircase that's around the drums spin around and, and there's certain cues during the show for that. And, mm. and um, so, yeah, we build it. We, we wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and get to work on the show and, and build it all day long and then have a little bit of a break and then show what happened. Um, you know, open an acts and all that. And we'll, we'll go on at nine and show a wrap up about 11 and then we'll tear it all down. Take us another couple of hours and put a long day. Huh? Yeah. What so, do you do? Do you travel at that point? yeah jump so, on the bus yeah so we'll throw all that stuff in the wow. truck and we'll have you know like seven <clears throat> semi trucks six or seven semi trucks that we'll we'll load all that in you know it's all sequence mm -hmm. and and things go in first and and and, mm -hmm. and timing and we'll get it all packed up and then yeah we'll have a bus call at like two two thirty in the morning or some somewhere in there and that's when you leave leave for mm -hmm. the next show so you only get about Five hours, four out, four, four or five, five hours, hours of sleep. sleep. If the roads are good, we'll get four or five hours of sleep. But is is that the way? Is some shows a little bit longer in between distance wise, and you get a little more sleep? Not or, really. No? I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> wow. we, we call it chalking out the stage at, yeah. at seven thirty. We we chalk out the see all that stuff hanging there. Mm -hmm. It hangs above our head, so we got to put. Uh, well the lighting guys will put uh, points down on the stage to let the riggers know in the um, rafters where to, point them. To, where, where to send down the tr chain mm -hmm. to hang those motors and chalk out uh, seven 30 in the morning. God, I mean, God. sometimes, sometimes if the, if the drive's long, we'll, it'll, you know, we might get there a little late or something, but, yeah. but we try to stick to that mm -hmm. schedule. So. Uh, how long is a tour generally? How many days before y'all take a break? just the weekends uh, oh yeah you just go out on the weekends. yeah we'll, we'll leave on the wednesday okay. and do like say thursday friday saturday well that's not too bad be I back mean, sunday you you might be wore out mm -hmm. you know after three days of that but but you catch up but that's mostly east coast when we go out west coast we'll do a whole month straight we'll we'll do about four weeks straight i know you wore out after something like that um, Where, where's this one that's in uh heinz field in uh, Pennsylvania, and sketch up, <laughs> and uh, uh, we were opening up for Luke Bryan there, and that's a stadium. Mm -hmm. Couple of sta stadium shows we did. Cool, yeah. We did that with him, and we did some with uh, Kenny Chesney one time. And mm -hmm. is that the whole crew? Yeah, is that the what the hell tool? Yep, what the hell tour? That's whole crew, but it's also uh, <laughs> <Just kissing. laughs> yeah, yep. No, that's it. That's what, yeah, that's what it is. And then um, that's you know the opening acts and their guys and everyone. So it's not just us, but um, I don't know if you notice right there in the middle, you got the two stairs, and then there's mm -hmm. like that little crack in the yeah in the video wall there. Well, that opens up, and behind that, underneath that, underneath the drum riser, is a whole plane airplane 
fusel lodge. Because uh-huh. Dirks is a pilot too, and, and uh-huh. you know he has a uh, drunk on a plane yeah. song. Uh-huh. And so it, when uh, when we d- when we would do drunk drunk on a plane, that would open up and we'd push out this plane <laughs> <laughs> out in the middle of the show. Well, is it? Well, is this you here? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. It. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> You ever watch that uh, series on Showtime called Roadies? No, I haven't seen that. It's it. really good. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. It got but about 10 episodes, but I wish it had more. What's the the guy's brother? Uh, <laughs> That's the one blonde one. and the uh, their br- blonde and brunette brothers. Uh, you know, they talk like this. and uh, Real Californian. One of them's got a hooky nose, the blonde guy. Oh, and- Wilson. Owen and and, Luke. and and Luke Luke Wilson is on roadies. Oh, okay, it's real accurate too. Real real good show. It's funny and oh, it's pull you in. acting. I thought you were talking about like a reality show. Or something. No, no, it's it's a it's a, it's just a series. That's a lot of power. Over. Yeah, we had power. Over the years. <laughs> I know, mighty. Yeah, fireworks. Yeah, I think that was the top of the show. Look, the look at the top of the show. You know, kicking off the the set. And we had Damn. flames, and, and it was a whole thing. Heck yeah. Um, so uh, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, you were on the news wearing my band uh, yeah. T-shirt. Uh-huh. Uh, because Dirk's drummer, his, ha- his house got hit by a tornado, right? Mm-hmm. What year was that, Justin? Um, 2009? No, it would have been later. Right there. It wasn't that long ago. Oh, yeah, it would have been. Oh, that was just a few years ago. Oh, that was at, um, that was at, yeah. No, that was at the beginning of uh, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, let's watch this little piece right here. So I don't, I don't remember if you told me that about this or if i just i think y'all just i just happened upon it i was like yeah. oh look at that all right that's uh-huh. you over the left shoulder of the guy in the white t-shirt yeah yeah all right and then and that's uh, all the people i work with all the, yeah. when you when you see it open up as as they pass through the door here you'll see justin's wearing a pine box dwellers t-shirt yeah. on the on the uh nashville news mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> all right yeah. Oh, Tony! Oh, hey! Hey, man. <laughs> this is exactly out, man. the tornado. Oh, you love yeah. to see the place? Yeah. Wow, wow, really 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 man. Well, it's kind of a mess right now, but oh, uh, check it out. Yeah, come on in, guys. Well, come on in. Check it out. It's kind of like the color. See, yeah. <laughs> There's right nothing color. left. Of we were trying to make a lot situation out of it. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah, it's like certainly it? a it's great very, sense very of humor. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. Now it's here we go. It's all natural. I didn't know your new kitchen was going to be so open. Check this out, It really brings the inside box into the room. Like a hurt piece. Man, the peak is amazing. I think it's a nice accoutrement. All right, look at this view. Wow. Is this the original floor? Look at that view. <laughs> Guys, I can get you a drink here. It's the drinks are in the refrigerator. Yeah, okay. Um, well, that's that's it. Yeah, that's the only time we make the well, news unless we well, get a rest. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, a little, it's a little cold. I could probably... Man, that was I'll try to turn Yeah, that's that, that, great that, that, that he's able to poke fun at it. Yeah, you know? yeah. That was a really cool little video there. And he's been with him. That uh, Our drummer's been with him since he was in bars, since he first started out. Wow. Cool. What's that one? Oh, yeah, that's that's a rehearsal. What's that was, a, again, a, a same, uh, like a drunk on a plane thing we were going to do like a um uh, dirt was going to get up in one of those pods and fly uh, okay. at the end of the show and we were we were to get They're testing a pod yeah, out. yeah we were i'm on the ride up there and we were oh yeah we were testing it out and you know flying it, pod yeah and it, it tilted and turned and and you know had this whole thing um but yeah i mean that's some of what we do 
<laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Big time. All right. So uh, you were in Atlanta yeah. and, and played with Ocho La Rocha, Ocho La Rocha. At, at the Grand Parsons Guitar Pool. Then you played with American Anodyne in 2012 at Swamp Town Get Down. And then you moved to Nashville, a buddy that knew Dirks Bentley, mm -hmm. put you in touch with him. Yeah. He he was, he's our tour manager now, Chris Thacker. He was in that. Oh, it was Chris mm -hmm. that was in American Anodyne. Mer American Anodyne, yeah, playing guitar. And um, uh, did you hire on as, as a carpenter? Or, mm -hmm. or, yeah. Really? Was uh, uh, he, he was set carp and they were, uh, Dirks was transitioning from, being more of an open and act to a headliner yeah. and and his crew was expanding mm -hmm. and so they need another set carpenter and call me up and so you had experience in carpentry or did you just wing it well we we like to say fake it till you make it you, know, you just kind of <laughs> go for it i never you. was good with a hammer well well i had i had some experience in that level yeah. Uh, before starting there, um, because after American Anodyne, I, I played a little bit with uh, this band, uh, Connor Christian and Southern Gothic mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and we opened up for ZZ Top and uh, Sticks and Heart and Wow, did that stuff. And then I started uh, guitar taking for them and continuing on. And we did a tour with um, Corey Smith, which was like a theater mm -hmm. run, and we did that kind of stuff. And then that started to kind of fizzle out and Chris called me up for that. So it was a good little bridge. I, I had a little bit of experience in, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, background of a tour. Yeah. I mean, working as a mm -hmm. member of a tour, mm -hmm. but, uh, you didn't learn to swing a hammer from your daddy because he wasn't around too much. Right. No. And, and it's not, I mean, I'm not He's out not there swinging hammers. He's putting, like stuff yeah i'm there. not building okay cabinets so out there it's more of a it, it it's uh well the way they design it and put it together and and structured it's, it's made to be modular to, i mm -hmm, guess you know, put together and taken apart and then it, it locks together and yeah. and and all that and then you just set it in place where it needs Is to go the money pretty good and stuff like this mm -hmm. yeah yeah good yeah yeah he takes care of us and that's what you you were saying earlier that uh, all during the pandemic and now that this the reason we we were able to finally get you on the podcast was because you you messaged us and said all of a sudden you got two month hiatus. Yeah, we had some shows canceled. Cause yeah, of COVID. Yeah, and uh, uh, you said that during the whole pandemic shutdown and uh, and even this recent cancellation Dirk bentley keeps taking care of you during, yeah, during yeah. the downtime that's he kept us on and kept that's, us a paid good, and, that's a good man yeah uh come may i'll be with him for eight years now and and wow yeah but there's there's guys i work with who's been with him for 15 plus yeah. years so and yeah, yeah. Well, you where know. do you see yourself in the next, say, five, ten years, you just going to stick it on with dirt? I'll, I'll stick with dirt as long as he'll have me. And uh, yeah. I want to at least put in ten years or more yeah. with him, you know, and uh, go from there. We'll see. Do y'all have any kind of uh, um, retirement? Does he have any kind of retirement plan no, worked I think, into it? Or I think there's a – Health care or anything? We, we like get health care. Do you? Yeah. yeah. He, he provides us with health care. That's good. Yeah. Well, you need to start. You need to sock that money away somewhere, but for a rainy day, yeah, <laughs> for retirement, yeah, because it it'll come around. Does now does he pay you like uh, with check? Uh, you get a check. Um, no. Yeah, I mean it's just a little bit. Yeah. business on its own. What's your bank account number? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have uh, Social Security taken out? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. that's good. Yeah. No, I, I'm a. Uh, an employee yeah okay yeah it's it's not a it's not a uh well it's good if social security is going to be around when y'all get there yeah you know I, uh, uh, all it's kinds not, of it's not contracted out mm -hmm. you're, you're an employee yeah yeah i'm employed yeah 
Well, I was very pleased when I hit that age of retirement or hit that age of eligible for Social Security uh, because of all of the jobs, many jobs that I had all of the years over my years was, was uh, you know, first here, then there, and then somewhere else, and then a bunch of jobs over the years, but they all took Social Security out. And then it kind of like uh, goes by the the highest three years of your earnings somehow or another. And then that's what you end up making per month. So it's kind of nice. If I'd have worked more and worked harder, uh, I'd probably be making uh, more Social Security. There was three years that I know of. I was in a rock and roll band uh, touring around for 75 to 78. None of that was reported. <laughs> so. Well, think about me. I've been doing just that. I know. <laughs> just that. Yeah. I yeah. know. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm worried about you and Jesse. And, uh, yep. uh, hey, and how about Jesse doing that wood carving? Man. That is goodness. I saw it, dude. Crazy. Yeah. I saw that not too long ago, and it it's, blew me away. It blows yeah. me away, man. Yeah. I've got a few pieces that he's done already, and it's like... <laughs> Where what the hell, dude? <laughs> yeah, I t- I talked to him on the phone last night. He was he called me. He said I got to do a bio for for Dave Calloway. He's gonna put him in the Waycross magazine, and and he was wondering, you know, how to write a bio. And I said, man, just keep it short and simple, but say condense it all down. You know, I said, look, here's here's a good lead line. Your your daddy's a musician. Your mom is a graphic artist. You got a little bit of both in you, and you didn't realize the art until you laid the music down for a minute. And uh, surprisingly, you're damn good at it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I mean, it's amazing how yeah. good he is. Yeah. I mean, I, I've called myself an artist the whole my whole life, you know, drawing or whatever. I I could never do what he's doing. Now. Mm-hmm. Like, just like In, I, incredible. I couldn't, yeah, believe it. Yeah, Where even his draw, like his drawing, is like he's like, this is the first time I ever drew anything, and he he sends me this picture of it's a really detailed eye, not a human eyeball, like <laughs> the line. I mean, just you can see the reflection in the eye mm-hmm. in his pencil. Mm-hmm. His perspective. So, he's like, this is the first thing I ever drew. Is it okay? I was like, it's better than anything I've ever drawn. In my life. <laughs> it's uh, the ability <laughs> for somebody to take a blank sheet of paper and and start with the perspective. You know, mm-hmm. it's like how wide is an eye? How tall is it? Right. You know, it <laughs> look come out looking like a third grader for most folks. Mm-hmm. But how uh, that's something inherent in him. Inherent. And Heron <laughs> and Jesse Heron. It's, it's pretty damn awesome. He's well, going to be vending at the uh, Swamp okay. Town yeah. in three weeks. Yeah. Now, are you going to be here in when, three weeks? When is it? March 10th, 11th, 12th. I'll probably be off. Yeah. I'll oh, come man, that's before. great. Yeah. Good yeah. Time. yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and Jesse used to play together back in the day with Will and Jamie Moore. That was a. Uh, us and Eddie, or was it? Uh, I don't remember what we were called, but it was. They were. Will was talking about. There's it. Jesse's eye. Yeah. yeah. Oh that yeah. That was the first thing he drew. Yeah, he's like, this is the first thing I drew. I was like, screw you, dude. <laughs> Look at that. You could see the. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and and the reflection in yeah. it. Yeah. And 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 he he does a few of them and and starts. Uh, developing any, carpal tunnel. No, he, he had carpal tunnel just from bass playing. Yeah, and then this, the the wood carving, exaggerated it, and he had to get that corrected. Show that some oh, yeah. some of the wood carvings that he's done. He's got a a post on there with a bunch of them. Um, there, yeah, that's a good one. This is just, yeah, sick. Now you start with wood carving. You start with a lump of wood and how do you this again it comes to perspective you've got to see this whole thing in your head and it's 3d he's, too? Doing, he's doing a totem pole that's like a 
You brought is the, that for James Five? Yeah, you brought oh. the log to him. Well, I did. Yeah, I thought he said I that. did. I I brought it from James Fowles' house. Have time. you seen the pictures of it? No, <laughs> they're on there somewhere. But uh, gracious alive, he does a lot of wood spirits. Yeah, look, at that. look at that. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, and Carrie was showing me this stuff, and uh, and he posted like I did this this morning. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm thinking, this would take me ten years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my son, he's into horror movies or whatever, and I got Jesse to do like a a Christmas gift for him, like a little carving of a character from a movie. And I told him, I said, here, you know, here's some pictures to look at. The next day, because I could, you know, it wasn't the next day, but it was a few days. He's like, I got it ready. I was like, <laughs> what? Scroll on down a little further, where there's there's uh. Mm. Actually, is that Swamp Town Get Down got my name on it up top there? Is it share? No, it doesn't. If you go to my, well, if you go to my page, that post is still might be sitting up there. It's probably back uh, on down. There, try that one right there. That's got 21 photos on it. This would be a good good uh showcase of some of his i think this is like work. some of his first stuff i think <laughs> <laughs> there that that's it that's yeah. it yeah this is and the, and then the uh finish he's putting on these things too mm-hmm. the look stains and yeah yeah lacquers and, and then that's not that's a creative perspective you know mm-hmm. it's like a face with all these leaves around it. yeah that's just badass now here's uh cohen's piece that you commissioned from him coming up there it is oh, okay yeah. Oh, yeah that's that's wood yeah wow. and it's three-dimensional isn't it yes yeah, all the way around uh crazy i think he said it was maple i think oh. that's it looks like an alligator an alien alligator, duck billed alligator. It's funny, all of these uh, faces look like James Files. <laughs> <laughs> James Files, a friend of ours. is a wood, is a wood nymph and a and a friend of Jesse's. Yeah, he is. He's he's a good guy, and a big supporter of Jesse. And the music and the festivals. He works, helps us out. Him and, and Denise, his wife, helps us out at all the festivals. Uh, well, we didn't ask you this beforehand. Uh, did you ever write songs? Uh, a few with those, with, with Ocho La Rocha. Um, yeah. do, um, you, do you have anything that you perform or play? Not, not, not really. Not these days. Um, but a couple of those songs, there, there was a few songs we had with Ocho Rocha that um, got some placement in TV shows and movies and stuff like that. Better than anything I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, I've we, been waiting on something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, commercials and stuff like that. And we, we, were, we had one song in um, uh, Mercury's Funny Song Videos that I wrote. It was like this baby montage with babies throwing up in dad's mouths and stuff. And <laughs> A song oh, playing man. in the background. Uh, <laughs> oh, didn't uh, you say you had, what a, else? had one in Hot Tub Time Machine? Yeah, we, yeah, we had one in Hot Tub Time Machine. Is there a clip of that? Um, yeah, we, we were trying to find one earlier. Uh, <laughs> hot Tub. Hot Tub. Yeah, I think. Uh, this is a clip that uh, and it, your it song's start, at the tail the, end of this? This is yeah. the perfect cut for the, uh, to show the, off the song, I don't think. But. No, but it, Nonetheless, your song is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It warrants a play. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 check this out. Brought a regulation bar for Tubbin tonight. Nice! Yeah. I got vodka, fucking tequilas on meals. Oh, oh, oh! You guys are gonna love this. Check this out. Chernobyl. It's like the Russian Red Bull. It's got shit in it. It's not even legal here. Oh, what shit? How the fuck am I supposed to know, there dude? We go. But it's illegal. Why didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're telling that you're, it, 
your song came on the radio. It started coming on at the yeah, very end and, of it. and it keeps going, and then it, it gets a little louder in the yeah, scene. Yeah. It kind of pans out. Yeah. Um, now, do you get uh, royalties on this? I didn't What's write that? that one, so I don't get royalties on that one, but yeah. I get the one on uh, uh, America's Funny Song Videos. Really? And that was also in uh, Cougar Town and some commercials and other things like that, too. So. Does I'm, that amount up to anything? Like I made a, a well. I just got the uh, tax taxes or like the not W two or whatever the ten ninety nine or whatever. yeah whatever it is. It was a uh, hundred and twenty two dollars last year. I got okay. and royalties from that. So. That sounds oh, yeah. about like the only che- the only royalty check I ever got for a song that me and Billy Ray wrote together was uh, it was. It was well played over in the Netherlands or somewhere, mm-hmm. and we ended up getting the royalty check for sixteen dollars and thirty two cents. <laughs> and in my whole life, that's the only royalty check I ever got. Thanks. But you know what? Before I cashed it, I photocopied it on some hard blue paper, and I was gonna frame it, and hang it. Yeah, but it's still sitting in my file cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten any from uh like streaming stuff uh yeah yeah i've gotten some some money from that yeah well, it's uh, royalties kind of. yeah it is it doesn't amount to much was, yeah. I, I learned a lesson on that that one there that uh america's funny song videos one the guy i wrote that with registered in, in his name first oh. without my name being on it oh. and it generated about eight thousand dollars before i even figured that out oh gosh and, and then it kind of came out we who kinda, was the guy you wrote it with uh johnny well his real name's john Carey, but it, his stage name was johnny la rocha that's Rachel right LaRocha. he was the guy that uh i was dealing with to get y'all down to grand parsons yeah he was he was kind of uh, so he made eight thousand dollars before he said anything to you about mm-hmm. it. <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about royalties or, right. or publishing or mm-hmm. any of that stuff. And uh, once once I found out, I, I learned he was kind of pushy with me when I was dealing with him, trying yeah. to get y'all down. He was ne- trying to negotiate, and I said, "Look, man, you want to play or not? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how it works." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Pull up uh, the rest of them pictures from my uh, second email, and. Uh, Let's uh, go through some more of them. Let's see where we were at there when we swapped over. I think it was about the Kix Brooks picture that we were on. That Okay, let's see. Going past that, 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 that. There. Right there. Let's pick up oh, from yeah. there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, um, I, I did Is that, that for, right during the show? Yeah, okay. yeah, and I did that for years, and uh, I'm still doing it now. I'm actually doing that with Dirks, but uh, for years I did that for our uh, pedal steel player. Um, our stage left guitar tech does um, our rhythm guitar guy and our pedal steel kind of. Is stage left from the stage yeah. or from the audience? Uh, you, if, from the if, stage. If you're stage on the left. Sta- uh-huh. Okay, that's right. Yeah. And uh, our our pedal steel guy plays dobro and banjo and kind of utility guy and um so anyway uh it's it's too it's too much for the um it's too quick of a change for the stage left guy to do it by himself or do do it all on his own so um i would hand off the guitars for uh Mm -hmm. our stage left or our pedal steel guy and then now you have to tune them too no he'll he'll do that um Mm -hmm. uh but uh, but I'm not I'm doing that now with Dirks. Uh, we and, have some personnel change, and I'm I'm okay. handling Dirks' guitars during the show. All right, boom. That's early. That was like the second year I was with Dirks. Sounds of summer. Yeah. Uh, 2015. Yeah, man. Uh, so that video wall there is it. Kind of see how it's kind of got a little curve to it. Mm-hmm. Well, I was responsible. For uh, for building the, the framing of it. Mm. And so I, we'd build that whole entire wall. Um, and it was a headache now. And that's, that's when we had, uh, is that fire? Yeah. That's when we had pyro. <laughs> yeah. Cheese. I love this. Oh yeah. yeah. That's good. That's out in Joshua tree. Uh, somebody yeah. wrote up there in the caption of this, whoever posted it 
said uh, uh, Joshua Tree and a and a tech uh, a, a tour technician or something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, wow. So uh, Chris that. Chris Thacker's brother, uh, step brother Chris Unk who lives in Atlanta. That's one of the first guys I ever met when I moved to Atlanta. That's kind of how I, I got remember in. his name. And, uh, um, he lives in Joshua tree now. And he wrote an article about me or had me in it of meeting me and learning about Graham Parsons. And he lives in Joshua tree now, but it was in the Joshua tree community magazine. Just not hmm. about a month ago. Is Chris, how old is Chris? Uh, in his four, early forties. Okay. Yeah. There. <laughs> comments yeah that's at, <laughs> you remember uh, that yeah i remember that that's at the creek it is and that's the night i went out in my wife's palazzos palazzos <laughs> pants those Don't yoga bother. yoga pants with the with the all kinds of paisley print all over them yeah <laughs> I, I, when i came across this picture i remembered we met there was these two girls there from somewhere off not, not from Waycross. That was uh, oh, wait a minute. You, were they with you? Yeah, but they, oh, they're okay. from, they're from Waycross. Uh, they are uh, Holly Mercer and mm, Li Liza. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, <laughs> look familiar, but oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is my grandson yep. Wyatt yep. Stewart, and uh -huh. that's my daughter's boy. So you tell uh, Uncle Justin and yep. Uncle Kyle yeah. uh, why it is wearing Kyle's mustache. Uh huh. That, that, I remember that now. That was that was great. Hey. He's grown now. He's not. He's, oh man, he's yeah. he's in middle school now. Still oh, there we sharp. go. That's American Anodyne mm -hmm. with Josh Sharp playing pedal steel. That's a good picture yeah and he's killing it now he's he's fixing to move to san francisco yeah or somewhere, uh, i think he's on his way or already out Josh there. sharp we're talking about yeah uh, got uh, a job at the san francisco chronicle right uh yeah yeah he Lee. moved from the atlanta journal to san francisco chronicle and we're representing white cross we're mighty proud of it yeah he was big time now and he broke a a, a legal Oh, that's right. That case uh, wide open. Yeah. Uh, a a uh, what do you call that? False imprisonment? Not mm -hmm. false imprisonment. He, he got somebody out of prison. He got somebody him. who was wrongly, wrongly charged, accused. and uh, and was in there for a long time, eighteen or twenty years yeah. in prison, and he got to the bottom of it, and they went and arrested the real, the real guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was it's a murder. Heavy. It was Dang. a murder. So, yeah, I mean, I guess somebody that would be offering him a crazy. job out somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. That and is that's, great. That's our t current tour manager with uh, Dirks. That's Chris Thacker. Thacker. Yep, yeah, Chris Thacker. That's right. Okay. Yeah, leading, the, leading the charge now. This was Swamp Town Get Down, I think. Uh, you'd have to blow that up and see that, that or lanyard Graham, badge or on my Parsons. thing. Yeah, that's Swamp Town. And Adam that's Payne uh, and Fester Haygood, Levi yeah. Lowry and Fester. Oh, that's Levi. Yeah, yeah, yeah Levi. Wow. And Fester, yeah. yeah, I don't. I can't see so good so far away. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no telling what that discussion was about. Who, who knows? We're up under one of the pop ups, and you're telling me a good story because I'm mm -hmm. smiling. <laughs> Oh goodness! <laughs> that, I love, yeah. I love this. There's Lindsay, yeah, and Brandon uh, Jones, Brandon and with with the shirtless, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> Reed Daniel. Reed, no, that was at Bonnaroo. Oh, it was. I think that was at Bonnaroo. That picture. What's that shirt? Waycross Shrine. Look, yeah, it's up close I, in the next one. I found that at my grandma's house. It says Waycross. It's uh, the all trying, night all night, all night scene. Yeah. All night scene. Yeah. yeah. We had that, that in the Memorial Stadium for years. I went to it one year and bought some sheet music when I was still a piano player. It was, what's that next picture? 
There it is. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll tell you how the Wake Bonnaroo went. Shrine, all night scene. <laughs> yeah. That was a, a Waycross tradition right there. The red velvet cake was something you couldn't do without. And the gospel music, there's American Anodyne. We saw that one earlier. All right, that's Charles Bradley. Yeah, yeah that's Charles Bradley. That's in Atlanta. That was the uh, one y'all went to. I didn't see Charles Bradley, but uh, Ashton did. Ebor City. That wasn't the one that y'all were following down there. That... No, uh, that was John Spencer Blues. Explosion. Oh, okay. That was early on when he first was starting getting going, or you know, when yeah. he was doing his thing. That hoodie, uh, nine thirty club. That's a club in uh, DC. I think it's in DC. I was already out on the road. Bro. Where were you at this point? Uh, working with Dirks? No, I think I was. Uh, well, I might have been working with Dirks, but that hoodie's from when I worked with uh, Connor Christian in Southern Gothic. We were opening up for uh, Corey Smith, and yeah. we did, we did the nine thirty club. Yep, that's Greg Allman. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my eyes aren't so good for real. Well, he doesn't really Dave's look like his stuff up there, and I'm like, I can't even see words. That's in California. That's in, uh, Stagecoach, where they do, uh, um, where they do uh, Coachella. It's the same facility yeah. as Coachella. They'll they'll do Coachella for a couple weekends, then take a couple weekend weeks off, revamp it, and do Stagecoach, and that's what where that well, is. Damn, yeah, they copy, they copy this. Yeah, so he was playing um on the stage next to us and uh and i just went you know see him and kind of stand off to the side and as i was walking back to our stage he was just happened to be crossing yeah. my path and i was like well i can't let that opportunity pick, pick, i don't know just, just someone, hand off your phone real yeah fast someone say, around him yeah you say hey i'm a georgia boy i did <laughs> i shook his hand and said i said i'm a georgia boy uh from waycross georgia Oh goodness! Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now that's an interesting story. We uh, uh, we did a uh, fundraiser with him at the Moody Theater where they do Austin City Limits, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was some some fundraiser he was doing, and we played it, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Casey Musgraves played with us, and wow, they had. Uh, I think it was Texas A and M or or some Texas college football team there that, that had just won the national championship that year, mm. college championship, and so that that was part of the fundraiser and had them. They had the the trophy, that crystal, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, football, uh, yeah, national championship tr trophy. Well, that you know they did their thing, and then we played, and uh, we're playing, and I had to go backstage. And go around to the other side of the stage to to pass off a guitar, or do something. And as I'm running back behind the stage, I start step. I'm start running over glass and stepping on glass, crunching on glass. And I didn't know what it was or think anything about it. And did the thing and finished the show out. And then started hearing stories. And oh no! Apparently, no a catering girl had a catering cart, and that trophy trophy was on the edge of a table, oh. and she bumped. The table with the catering cart and knock down, knock the trophy over. And well, I'm sure they could make another one just that, like that. Yeah, I think everyone gets one, whoever wins. But, right. yeah. but broken how, a million how did pieces. he come into the picture? <laughs> yeah, he's from Texas, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was just back there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, him. Uh, Jamie Johnson was there. Um, yeah. A handful of other people were there. Yeah, we saw uh, that. Lance we Armstrong saw that. was there. Yeah. Lance Armstrong was backstage. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got a quite a collection of T-shirts, don't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like a different one in in every photo. Is that all of them? Yeah, Justin. Uh, so you had a story about uh, the Martin guitar. Oh yeah, yeah. We went to Martin Factory one time. Uh, Dirk's is a Martin guy and has a his own signature cool line or, or signature guitar and uh we had some time to go do a tour and one of the martin guys one of the was it in bethlehem 
Pennsylvania? Uh, Nazareth. Nazareth. I mean, Nazareth, yeah. Yep, uh, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. We went to one the, of them biblical towns. Yeah. <laughs> it was Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we went. They uh, there's, there's a little museum out front, and they yeah. gave us a tour of that, and then they gave us a tour of the factory. But we're doing that museum, and, uh, you know, it's, it's – handful of guitars from the 1800s and and then you know it's like uh cases of them and uh they start to get on up in the years starting to get in the 40s and 50s and then you know they got guitars there that um uh Waylon Jennings played mm -hmm. and, and whoever else and then all of a sudden they start cracking open the cases and asking us if we want to play any of these guitars Shit. So that they belonged to somebody belong belonged to those people Holy. and so they let us play uh Waylon Jenny's guitar and, and whoever else. And they had, and I got a picture of it somewhere. I don't think I sent it y'all, but um, they had one case standing by itself uh, off from the rest of them. And it had Hank Williams Sr.'s guitar in it. Holy that, no that he gosh. bought in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, mm -hmm. and uh, sold it to whoever at some point. And then they, they bought it from whoever had it. But they opened up that case and let us play Hank Williams Sr.'s <laughs> guitar. And I got a little video of myself playing it, and I couldn't hardly get through just a oh, handful of my. chords. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> that would be. Oh, man, it's heavy. Yeah. I guess they don't do that for everybody, do no, they? No, I, I, don't, I don't know. But, man, I couldn't believe it. I, I almost didn't want to touch it at first, you know, yeah. but I couldn't. I almost you, couldn't not touch yeah, it. Yeah, you, you couldn't know? resist that. Yeah. That's, that, that'd be too much to pass over. Yeah. Yeah, and then took us on the tour of the factory, and that was all, mm -hmm. you know, awesome too. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had a guitar in there that was uh, whatever, hundred thousand uh, dollar. There, uh, one hundred thousand thousandth guitar or something. Yes, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, like the uh, I was just thinking about the Quentin Tarantino movie Hateful Eight, mm -hmm. and uh, Martin. That, I don't know, it was some old Martin. I can't yeah. remember all the details, but it was like, it was a period piece. So it was like this old, like they used the real thing, but they had this, he was, Kurt Russell was going to break it. And they were supposed to say, do this pause. pause okay. And then give him the other one. And then he's supposed to break it. Well, he just goes through and just busts the hell out of this guitar. Oh, and that, that like stopped them from, ever do, working with movies that they said they wouldn't put up any mm. of their stuff like that for a movie again or something but yeah it's kind of like uh but you see jennifer jason lee's face you don't know what i'm talking about mm -mm. you can see her face yeah. uh because she knows it's the real one and she knows that uh and she's like <laughs> just in shock it's, but it's uh, all in the movie Kind of like Alec Baldwin shooting the. Uh, no, it's different. I know it. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which is worse. <laughs> no, that's. Oh, that's is that it? Are you pulling up? Yeah, the accident. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen the movie. Actually, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. A moment I'm when just, Kurt Russell just, destroys 145 year old. You're talking about Martin all those guitar. old Martins. I'm not trying to get sidetracked, but uh, it's a short, isn't it? <laughs> Fifty nine seconds. I just like the look on her face, it's, and that that stayed in the movie. This is. I guess you, if, if you're gonna break it, you might as well keep it. Music time's over. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Turn around. Good. <laughs> Heck, that might have been in the museum when I went. Good find. 45 year old guitar. How did he make that mistake? Yeah, and that wasn't even, that was out of character for her character because she didn't care about nothing. She was like, what was he doing? Woning in the background. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> well, there. He thought it was the other one, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he just didn't care. I wonder if that was in the museum when it went. <laughs> no, in Clinton, yeah. you know, he's probably like, just go ahead and break that guitar. It'll be a real wild factor. Yeah. 
that uh, charge went back on the production company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe it came or, out or, of Kurt or, Russell's check. Yeah, it's probably insured. <laughs> you know, so, I imagine so. Yeah. Well, we covered a lot of ground. I reckon we'll do a tale of the week right here for you folks. This one is, uh, I searched the world over and I couldn't find anything that was uh, real relevant. Uh, I never, uh, tale of the week is no uh, weekly blog that I did from, for about two and a half years. And, uh, this is a book that was put out with 25 blogs in it. And uh, <clears throat> tonight's blog is concerns our dependency on digital devices. Let me make sure I got my trusty cell phone right here. <laughs> It's hard to imagine life without cell phones and computers nowadays. There are whole generations, including my three grandkids, who roll their eyes and yawn when I get, begin to expound on my boring childhood with its rotary dial telephones tethered to the wall. The black and white televisions with only one channel to watch and phone books that you'd rely on at least until the new ones came out a year later. Even then, you kept them because they were full of handwritten notes and phone numbers you couldn't part with. We didn't have a Google machine. All we had were daily newspapers like the Waycross Journal Herald or monthly magazines like Look and Life and the antiquated Dewey Decimal Card Cabinet located in the local library. We didn't have a Facebook machine. All we had were our friends, neighbors, and kin who we spoke with face-to-face -face or over that rotary dial telephone. Our YouTube machine was simply the TV, which if you watched on most evenings in prime time, you'd catch a live performance of Elvis, Buddy Holly, Johnny Cash, The Beatles, or Petula Clark. And we sat cross-legged on the living room floor while our eyes and imaginations were bombarded with Don Rickles, Jonathan Winters, Red Skelton, Jackie Gleason, Rod Serling, Alan Funt, Roy Rogers, and Rowdy Yates. Television and movie theaters were our link to the world outside. As tied down as we were by cords attached to our old-fashioned phones, we are just as tied to the remarkable smartphones we carry around with us today. My wife, Lynn, had her Google Pixel phone stolen while we were in Macon, Georgia last November. It was like the world came to an end for a few days till our son gave her one of his used ones and a trip to the friendly folks at Verizon yielded most of her contacts and phone numbers that had been floating around in some cloud I'm clueless. Our computer suffered a minor breakdown about two years. Well, I take that back. There ain't nothing minor about a computer breakdown. I've come to rely on doing everything on that blasted hunk of bits, bytes, sound boards, and wires, from finances and spreadsheets to emails and watching Don Rickles going crazy at Ronald Reagan's second inaugural gala in 1985. I hauled it over to Josh, the computer doctor, and for 10 days, it was worked on and retooled after picking up a virus or some such. Oh, Lord, they're almost like one of the family. It was so sad. While it was sick, I took to watching Hulu and Netflix movies on my smartphone just to be able to cling to something digital. When I finally got it back, I had to reload software and update drivers just to run my Quicken Microsoft Office, Hewlett Packard, Honeydew List, where did the 60s go, and just shoot me now. It's exhausting, but it beats writing everything down in a composition book like I used to do in the distant 80s. Psychologists are promoting treatments for digital addiction, advising sufferers to log off and walk in the sunshine. 
And I hear that the current generation of young folks rely so heavily on digital devices for their social interactions that in a few years they won't be able to carry on a simple conversation with a prospective employer in a one-on-one -on -one job interview. Life was simpler back in the day. I resisted smartphones for as long as I could until my wife bought me one for Christmas about 16 years ago. You can't say no to a Christmas present from your wife, so here I am, tied down to modern technology, an analog man in a digital world. Here are a few things I've learned that might come in handy for you. Don't drop your cell phone on the pavement. Don't drop your cell phone in the toilet, Jesse Heron. Don't leave your cell phone in a convenience store restroom outside Jacksonville. Don't befriend strangers while hula hooping in Grant's Lounge with your makeup bag containing your cell phone nearby and turn your back for a second. They won't take the hula hoop no matter how pretty it is. And don't accept beautifully wrapped Christmas presents that appear to have cell phones inside. And with that, I'd like to give you a recent example of how disastrous that digital dependency can be. A few days ago, my Wi-Fi went down. No computer. Next, one of Verizon's Transformers in Alpharetta blue, and me and the whole damn state of Georgia couldn't do a thing with our cell phones for hours. Then, of all things, a man behind me at the Circle K gas pump got pissed off at me. So I'd finished putting my gas in, but I was standing there with the hose still in my hand, glued to the little gas pump TV screen, watching Maria Menounos talking about how to decorate your home for the holidays for under $5 <laughs> and how to make little strawberry banana enema suppositories and how to cure the hiccups, of which I had a terrible case. So I'm standing there waiting on her to finish when this guy eases up behind me and hits me with a tire iron hard. When I finally woke up, I was hopped up on Demerol with 15 stitches in my head, asking the doctor for the guy's name who did this to me. Doctor says, Mr. Griffin, you're in no shape for revenge. I said, revenge? Hell, I just want to thank him for curing my hiccups. <laughs> Golly. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, it's good to have you. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank, thanks for having me. Man, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen you forever. I know. I know I don't get back as often as I used to. Well, you're a busy man, busy, busy out there mm -hmm. on the road. So yeah. All family is gone from here for you, right? Yeah. My, my aunt, I'm staying with my aunt. Gail. So, yeah. 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 And that's it. Earlier today, we saw my uh, ninety-year-old grand aunt at uh, Baptist Village. About that. Yeah, wow. yeah. We still got plenty of friends. That's right here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, your mama's mama. Uh, aunt, my mom's aunt. Aunt. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yep. Well, brother, we'd like to have you back anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Swing on back in. Yeah. We'll keep the light on. <laughs> thank y'all for watching again and uh remember we got a patreon account over there uh, it's only five dollars a month where you can watch exclusive episodes uh a uh, little uh deeper down and dirty and uh, dave takes a shirt off <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody wanting to pay five dollars for that <laughs> but uh if you have any anything you'd like to uh say to us uh uh, just hit us up on something in the water podcast at gmail.com and uh, we'll see you next time. Just
man.